Hi, welcome back to the Cozy Sound Channel. This rainy day project follows on from me achieving getting this old Casio SK1 keyboard up and running again. Having got it up and running again, I thought to myself, it'd be nice if I could get it to play along with the Project 12 modular synth. So I thought, well, yeah, if I could basically use a clock signal on that to sync playback on this thing, then that'd be, that'd be great. And yes, there is what appears to be a relatively straightforward method of doing that. Quick internet search, and I found a website that showed a what well, appears to be a relatively simple modification. I'll put the link for the website down in the description. But basically what happens is, one of the, uh, what I originally thought was an odd feature but proves to be very useful on this SK-1, is it has this one key play function. And by pressing either of, of these buttons on the keyboard, it will step through one step at a time, the sequence that's stored in the SK-1's memory. So you, you program a sequence in, and then each press of this button steps that sequence along one step. Now what this modification does is it uses a CV gate signal to simulate pressing these buttons. As I say, it's a very simple mod. Having said that, making any modification to your uh, uh, standard kit is always a little bit risky. I was a little bit, I was unsure as to whether I really wanted to go down that route, but I decided that I would take that risk and hopefully things would turn out okay. So what I will say is that if you decide to copy what I've done here, then I accept no responsibility for the outcome, good or bad. It's your decision to take that risk that it may not work, but then again, it might, but it's your decision, not my decision. So if you decide to go down that route, it's all down to you. I don't accept responsibility for that. That said, it actually worked for me um, pretty much first time round. So what it does, um, it uses the, the way that he's done it is it uses a NPN transistor uh, across the contacts for the switch and then feeds the so you've got the collector and emitter across the contacts and then you feed the base with your of the transistor with your clock signal and that in effect turns on the transistor which is the equivalent of pressing the switch so what i'm going to do is go over to the computer run a, a short presentation which shows how i did the modification and then I'll do a quick demo of some of the things that happens when you plug it all into the modular system. So let's go and have a look how it's done. Modifying a Casio SK-1 for CV gate input. If you saw the previous video, the inside of the SK-1 should look pretty familiar. This time round, the one key play switches that we're looking for are underneath this bit of shielding as indicated with the arrow here. So if we remove the shielding, we can see that the circuit board's actually quite nicely labeled. So we know exactly where we're looking and what we're looking for. Looking at the other side of the circuit board, the keypads for the switches come together at these solder points up on the top left here. However, on the original diagram from the website, those have been traced back to the main circuit board and this collection of solder points here. More precisely, the left hand end of those solder points. The transistor, NPN transistors, are 2N3904. I've used exactly the same transistor. 
and the collector and emitter legs are soldered across the first and third solder pads from the left on that row that we've just identified. The base leg of the transistor is bent upwards and is soldered onto a 5.6 kilo ohm resistor, 5K6 as labelled here. Um, the original web page showed the resistor but didn't give a value for it. Thankfully the photograph was much better than the one here and I could actually see the colour of the stripes on the resistor so I knew it was 5K6. What I've also done is the connection between the resistor and the uh, base of the transistor has been insulated with some shrink wrap tubing. So in order to get the signal in we need an input jack so you can see that on the right hand side of the picture here and then connecting the jack to the uh, other end of the resistor from the transistor is a purple cable you can see on the left hand side there and once again I've used yet more heat shrink tubing to insulate it. We also need a ground or earth connection and I've taken that from the ground connection on the output jack that's soldered onto the circuit board. And then the whole thing is kind of screwed back together, making sure that none of the wires are going to foul up any of the uh, screw holes. So everything goes together nice and neatly. And we have our CV gate input jack coming out the back of the SK-1. So... That's it all put together. Let's go listen to what it sounds like. Well, there you go. On the plus side, I can now trigger the sequencer on the SK-1 from Project 12. On the downside, once I turn off the SK-1, its memory is wiped. So that lovely sequence that's been playing along with the modular synth is no longer there. So basically, you just if you turn the power off, you just have to start again. But hey, it's never going to be perfect because it wasn't designed to do it in the first place. But, yeah, it's a workaround, it's a hack, and it's one that works, and I'm sure I'm going to have loads of fun playing with it. So if you're feeling confident, have a go. If you're not, then leave it alone. There's always a risk. It's up to you whether you want to take it.
Thank you.